Thanks for staying with us. And we are back in Africa where Lesotho will be holding parliamentary elections this Friday. Amid failures by the parliament to pass constitutional reforms meant to bring uh, political stability to that country. And joining me now uh, to speak more on um, elections coming up in Lesotho, I'm being joined by the publisher Inside Watch Africa, Shay Ademo. Good to have you join us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks. So let me get your thoughts on the fact uh, on the current situation in Lesotho. About 50 um, political parties will be contesting this election. We've seen um, issues around, um, just issues around the the kind of politics in parliament in Lesotho, how um, coalition in that in that parliament has failed. Um, what do you make of that, this, this, the fact that 50 political parties will be contesting election, and how, what do you expect the outcome to be? Okay, I mean, as an African, um, I'm a little worried that um, 56 years after independence, um, in a country that has a population that is less than 3 million, um, we're having a problem like this. But I'm hopeful because it is better to, to, to be forward-looking uh, than to completely lose hope and say that um, no good can come out of, of this. Uh, my prayer and expectation is that the people of the Soto will come out in their numbers to vote and take advantage of another opportunity that is being offered them to elect in those who can properly put the legislation and the structure that can allow peace. It is not something that one can rejoice on, that the country has had more than four um, coups uh, since um, its independence. And, uh, and up until now, they are unable to at least just pass in uh, a legislation that will allow for a proper um, uh, you know, a political system in the country, because it will be better that you don't allow for cross carpeting and the kind of rancor that has gone on for, for, for so many years. In five years, we've had two prime ministers, and all of that for me is not something to be happy, you know, I mean, about. But like I said again, one is just hopeful that um, the people of Lesotho will come out and they will, they will vote the right um, candidate in that can do the right thing for the country. Hmm. How, how do you expect the, the turnout to, to be, um, bearing in mind that in 2017, the, it was just about 46% of the registered voters that turned up. And now when you look yeah. at the power play, um, two, two prime ministers in, in, in five years, uh, the unstable coalition and acrimony in parliament, do you think that we might see um, some level of voter party? I mean, like I said earlier, I mean, one would hope Yet the indicators are that people might be discouraged. But I mean, I would have expected that you see from the angle of this is the only way that you can bring in the right person or uh, the right uh, government, you know, that can rule them and change their, their, their destiny. So uh, voter apathy, yes, would be expected, but I think that's not the right thing to do. So I would expect, and as an African, I'm praying and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the people of Lesotho will come out in their numbers and take advantage of this opportunity that is being offered them on Friday to come out in you know, large numbers so that they can vote in the right uh, political leader that can change the future and laws of, of, of the country. But without these reforms, and one of them is the 11th Amendment of the Constitutional Bill um, 2022, the other is the, um, I think, is the um, National Assembly Electoral Bill. And, and most, both, both bills were meant to drive reforms in the electoral process, as well as um, also address provisions around political parties and the, the crossings in the parliament. Without these reforms, um, how, how do you expect, the, uh, do you expect the, the elections to guarantee political stability in Lesotho? I think one of the positive things to look at is the fact that at least they're still obeying court orders. I mean, you recall that uh, the prime minister had advised the king to call for a state of emergency that is called for, but the court overruled that, and, and, and that has been obeyed. And uh, that gives hope that at least um, the, the law is being respected. And so the fact that the law is respected is a good indicator that um, if only 
uh, they can come out in their numbers and vote. We would have something that can, I mean, help to keep the the country, you know, on track. Because for whatever it was, I think it would be not right for all of us throwing the towel at this junction and say, oh, nothing good can come out of this. The truth is, laws are still being uh, are being are still being obeyed. The call court uh, rules are still being obeyed, and that, in my opinion, gives a sense of 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 hope, and that we can only hope that um, that would sort of encourage the the the, the parties and and the fact that. Um, 50 political parties are, are, are getting involved. It shows that, I mean, there's a sense of hope that they believe that if, you know, um, they must be, they must be, that they have hope. That's why all of them are joining uh, in, in the process. So for me, that gives some sense of hope. And I think all of us just hold on. But doesn't that also mean that we might see um, some, some sort of runoff or, we might also see uh, the parties without a, or any no party without any majority in parliament again leading to these unstable coalitions. And then let me also ask you because we've seen the SADC, which is the Southern Africa um, Development Community, expressing frustrations with these um, reforms. The SADC have been the one mediating these reforms and have expressed frustration with how it has gone. No party in particular, um, whilst they say they are committed to the reforms, but no political party has said this is exactly how they will carry out the reforms if um, they are majority in parliament. Um, do you expect the SADC to continue to mediate, um, bearing in mind its frustrations with the process? I mean, SADC does not have a, a choice. South Africa surrounds the total. And uh, like we always say in Africa, if you know that somebody is going to affect your being satisfied with your food. When you're preparing your food, whatever visitor the person is, make sure you prepare that person's food, you know, along uh, making your food. Because if you don't, the person will short rush on you and you will not be satisfied. So uh, my advice would be that the SAEC would continue in their med in your mediation because at the end of the day, when everything goes bad, it would directly affect them. For instance, I mean, the water that is, uh, the, the, the good water that is being enjoyed in Johannesburg comes from some of, you know, the mountains that is in the Soto. So, uh, as it were, one can, you know, easily say that the destiny of, um, of, of the South African country is, is sort of directly tied to, to, to that of the Soto. So, I mean, when something affects you directly, you don't have a choice. Even though uh, the indicators on ground is frustrating, uh, the fact that they've done taking a couple of steps and that has been uh, has met with brick walls, they don't have a choice other than to try. Right. So that at the end of the day, I mean, uh, the good that will come out of this will be for everyone. Well, we're keeping our eyes on um, that election on Friday. I will see um, the robust interventions that the, the SADC and the international community will make in Lesotho. Thank you so much for talking to us, Shea Adeyemo. Thank you so much, Paul.